Hi, my name is Claire Thomas and I'm Deputy Director of Minority Rights Group International. One sobering thought that's continued to resonate with me during 2021 is how easily solidarity crumbles in the face of adversity. When we feel afraid, it seems there's a tendency to put ourselves first. Just think of the panic buying during the pandemic or the buying up of the vast majority of the vaccine stocks by global North governments. Of course, on the other hand, many people came forward. Health professionals worked tirelessly. Neighborhood volunteers helped out and people have continued to donate to charities like mine, despite falling earnings. Thinking this year, about crumbling solidarity, people stepping up, people being afraid. I've been reflecting on refugees, refugees who are afraid and who need solidarity. Even in good times, refugees in our countries are tolerated rather than celebrated. And if you think about it, Refugees who stand up for the values in countries they then have to flee, but stand up for values we all believe in, should really be celebrated and appreciated. But even in the best of times, it's more like they're tolerated and we are not in the best of times. Refugee journeys have become more difficult and yet refugee voices, refugee stories rarely get heard, only when there's a tragedy on the polish Belarusian border, on the US-Mexican border, or in the English Channel, do those stories get told. And what I want to share with you today is three, three stories, three recent stories that have impacted on me personally. So the first one, concerns the polish Belarusian border. And my colleague, Anna Allbooth, has been on that border in the forests at night, trying to help these people who've been manipulated, abandoned, uh, really let down by any system you can talk about. Not only has she been trying to help them, but she knows that by trying to help them, she may be considered to be breaking the law. How can it have become the case that stopping somebody from dying of hunger and cold is illegal? Trying to stop someone from dying because despite the efforts of Anna and many other volunteers like her, people are still dying. The second instance I want to share with you is when I was contacted by a Dutch lawyer who's representing a Somali minority clan refugee from Somalia. Now everyone accepts that he's a minority. Um, everyone accepts that minorities are discriminated against in Somalia and everyone accepts that Somalia really is a rather dangerous place to live even if you're not already discriminated against. And yet this individual has fought a seven year battle despite failing mental health to try to get recognition as a refugee, a place of safety where he knows he can be safe. And we're waiting right now to hear the outcome of the latest appeal. If a minority clan member from a country like Somalia has to fight a seven year battle to get recognized so as to not be returned to a country where his community is hated and despised, what chance does anyone else have? And the last refugee story I want to share with you is some of the people who are leaving Afghanistan or have left Afghanistan, or are trying to leave Afghanistan, as I record this. 
So we supported a movement in Afghanistan towards greater rights and equality, civil liberties. And we owe a duty to the people that we supported to make those moves, to make those claims, to stand by them now that they are no longer allied with the government of their country. And yet the pace of the schemes being devised and set up to offer safety since September the 1st, 2021, to these individuals have been moving at a snail's pace. It may well be that individuals will be offered a place months after they've been killed or arrested. So for me, the report on 21, 2021 has to be, we can do better. We can do better than this. Humanity can do better than this. Not only can, but must. We are better than this. And we have to try to be a better humanity than the experiences of refugees in 2021 would suggest. Thank you for listening.